I want to introduce you to our presenter. And let me tell you about her. Pam Queros is the, is the coordinator of educational technology for Orange Unified School District in Orange, California. She has 20 years experience in education, having taught at elementary, middle, and high schools levels, which includes serving as a library media specialist for 10 years. And she has served in leadership positions in technologies and libraries at the high school and district levels. And, and she didn't put this in her bio, but I was doing a little Google search on her. And she won several awards as she went through that process. <laughs> it is through these experiences she's been able to lead, model, and support teachers and administrators in technology-infused teaching and learning through online education. So Pam, I'm going to turn this over to you. So oh. you can be the presenter and show them what magic you're doing. OK. Thank you very much, Steve. Let me get my PowerPoint going up here. But first, I wanted to uh, welcome everybody. And thanks to Steve for allowing this, me this opportunity to uh, speak to you about Orange Live, which is what we call our online program. Orange Live stands for Learning Through Virtual interactive virtual education, and that was one of the words that I heard Steve uh, use earlier in describing his soft chalk product. And we do use soft chalk, but we use other products as well. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a little background about Orange Live and the history and um, how we run this program. And then most of my session is going to be talking about how teachers use, uh, how we train our teachers, how we select our teachers, and then uh, to actually take you into a learning unit in one of our courses and sort of show you some of that content. So I hope that will be useful for you. So let me just advance here. So uh, first off, let me just give you a little background. Um, Orange Live is our uh, interactive virtual education program that we run in our high schools. It's been in existence since 2003. We piloted our first course in 2002 uh, with an American government and econ class at one of our high schools. And, uh, it went so well that we were able to, the next year, launch uh, three more courses and uh, have focused mainly in the, in the core content areas initially. But we felt this uh, real need for our high school students to sort of experience a technology-enriched environment um, and be able to take courses that may not be locally available at their high school. Um, and create sort of this uh, self-directed course that allows them the flexibility to learn time management, to focus on uh, responsibility for their own learning, and then additionally pull the information literacy piece into that. Um, as I said, these courses um, are available to all of our high school students. 9th through 12th grades. We offer 24 courses, uh, and I am going to go into those courses a little bit more in detail in just a bit. Um, we also offer some blended courses, which would be offered at just individual high schools, uh, because that's where the teachers are located. So we have sort of a, a dual model going here, where we have fully online courses, where any of our students from any of our actual four high schools plus our one alternative ed high school can enroll. And then we have blended courses being offered at individual high schools where just those students from that high school can take advantage of that. Um, we, um, as I focus on the advantages of this program, I want to talk about, uh, interweave within that, how this program actually works. So as I mentioned, um, this program gives our students, our high school students, um, access to classes that may not be available at their high school. So if I have a teacher, for example, that teaches advanced placement art history at one high school um, and the other high schools don't have that course, that would, of course, open that course for all students to experience it. Our students must be enrolled in 240 minutes of traditional classes face-to-face um, -face classes or classes where they meet on the high school campus. And then they have the option of taking a maximum of two online courses per semester. Um, they also additionally obviously have to have access to the computer and the internet, which um, I would say most of them do at home. But if they don't have it at home, they also would have that available in the school library. 
Um, and again, some of the advantages for our students is that because there are no standard seat time hours for these classes, it allows them the flexibility to say take an additional class in their, uh, in their schedule that they might not be able to fit in in a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting time because of either a work schedule or because they're involved in sports. We have many kids that are involved in uh, not only one season of sport, but also two or three seasons of sports. So that right there, um, them having to be involved in those activities starting at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon would cut off um, them being able to take an extra course. So um, that gives them the flexibility for that. It also, we have found, really helps their organizational skills. They have to learn to manage their time. And um, I am going to talk a little bit about the experience because we do offer these courses for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade students. However, we do find that some of the 9th grade students struggle a little bit with management because they are learning to, um, you know, to study in the high school environment. But um, our teachers have found ways to successfully work with those students. So it's a great uh, tool for that. And then um, also we've, we've experienced that this uh, personalization of learning and that the teachers um, get to know these students almost better than they do in a face-to-face -face class because uh, in California, you know, we have fairly large class sizes. It's not uncommon to have 30, 40 students in a face-to-face -face class setting. And so uh, just by the nature of an online class where a student has to interact uh, with the teacher through various tools, which I will talk about, um, we have found that the students have more personalization there. So um, the program has uh, grown, as I said, from you know a couple classes in 2003 to now uh, you know 24 courses as well as some blended courses. Our courses are focused around um, learning units. Uh, we use the Blackboard management system or content system to manage our courses and our teachers each week create uh, learning units and uh, within those learning units we have a variety of activities and I'm going to show you those in just a little bit and what the pacing on that looks like. The assignments are technology rich um, and they involve uh, virtual chats, tools like Illuminate and voice boards and then all tests are required uh, to be taken face to face. Um, so there are quizzes, there are periodically uh, weekly quizzes that are given by the teachers, but um, the tests, like large unit tests and end of quarter, end of semester tests, are administered at each of the high school sites. There's a testing location, and those are available like during what we call a zero period time, which would be a 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. time slot, or after school. So um, they go in, they sit in a proctored environment, and uh, they do take those tests. Okay, so what types of classes do we offer? Well, I've created this Wordle here as a way to model this tool that I know many of our teachers use. But we do have courses in um, English Language Arts. We offer English, what we call English 9, English 10, English 11, and English 12. To graduate from high school in the state of California, you have to have four years of English. And then we also have what we call honors level uh, courses of English 9 and English 10. Um, we offer history courses, so we have world history, which is offered at the 10th grade level. We have U.S. history, which is offered at the junior level or the 11th grade level. And then we have a semester of government and a semester of economics, which is offered at the 12th grade level. Um, we offer mathematics, so we have Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And then we have geometry for those students. Um, we also offer electives. Um, we have Spanish 1, 2, and 3, as well as we have a teacher teaching a blended course of Spanish 4 and then AP Spanish Lit. Um, we offer a web design class, which is a full year class. We offer a um, um, freshman seminar, 
which is a course that all of our freshman students are required to take um, for a semester. That course uh, focuses on organizational skills, college and career planning, um, research paper writing, how to do proper research, and information literacy. The other half of that year, uh, the student would take a semester of health. And I'll say that health is one of our most popular courses um, that we offer in addition to the foreign language courses. Um, okay. Let me go on to the next slide. Okay. So as I mentioned, um, we have uh, students participate in these online courses from all four of our comprehensive high schools as well as all our alternative ed high school. And so um, each of the high schools gives four sections, what we call sections or periods to the program, and they're allowed then to, to enroll up to uh, 15 students. Since I have four high schools and we put about 15 students from each high school, depending, it can be you can flex a little bit here and there, but into each of those courses. We do uh, limit the numbers in the courses. So in other words, we wouldn't load a, an online course um, up to 60, 70 students. That's not what we do. Most of the courses are at about 30 students. Um, again, capping them at what we would uh, if it were a face-to-face -face class. So it's a great kind of a, a mutual partnership between the program and the high schools. And um, the fact that any student at any of our high schools can have access to any of these courses has been a real plus for this program. And additionally, that makes the program sustainable. Um, we have highly qualified teachers teaching in this program. They are uh, California State credentialed teachers. They are teaching the same board adopted curriculum with the same textbooks and resources as their face-to-face -face, uh, classes or their face-to-face -face counterparts. And it's just delivered through the online uh, Blackboard learning management system. These classes meet standards um, and comply with state reporting guidelines. And so when I go into this module that I'm going to show you, you're going to see how the teacher lists the state standards that are being covered that week and the pacing. So that's an important part of the component. Um, for the student, um, it's interesting in their schedules. A lot of times what will happen is that the counselor tries to schedule the student's online courses, either what they call a zero period course or an after school course, the seventh period, so that it doesn't leave a hole in their schedule. However, I do have some students, again, because of the flexibility of the program over the last couple of years that will take, say, come to school, take a first and second period, maybe have a break third period because they're taking an online course, and take a fourth and a fifth period. Um, therefore, they ha can leave a little bit earlier in the afternoon, or um, and they could study during that third period block of time when they had time free, go to the library, again, work on their course. Um, okay, as far as our teachers go, um, again, I said they were highly qualified. Uh, we provide for them professional development because it takes a lot of work to put a traditional face-to-face -face class online. Um, so the professional development that happens, in fact, if you're a new teacher coming in, um, I meet with those new teachers and we work extensively sort of on learning the tools. And I try to get them to be a good user of just a couple of tools initially so that they don't think that they have to be overwhelmed. You know, it's overwhelming to think you have to immediately implement eight different new digital tools into your course. So we, I approach it in that, okay, we're going to learn how to use this, this tool and we're going to get good at it for about a month, and then we're going to adopt another tool. So uh, in working with the new teachers or the teachers that are new to the online program, because they're certainly not new teachers just newly hired out of, out of teacher ed schools. Um, but um, so as I work with them, then we implement slowly those courses. And uh, I offer or I pay for them to come in and, and work. 20 hours over the summer on their course, which actually isn't, isn't a whole lot, but it gets them started. And then once a month, um, we release them where they come in, and we have a group meeting where we're learning or introducing a new tool uh, once a month. And 
<clears throat> as I said, these courses um, meet state standards. I'll show you those, uh, those standards as we get into one of the courses. We use the same textbooks that the students are using in the face-to-face -face class. Um, they have the choice of um, either checking out the textbook from the library, which most of them do. A lot of the teachers will take parts of those textbooks, the reading pieces that they want them to cover, and put them right into their courses through uh, using soft chalk or steady mate, um, different tools that they've, that they've developed into their courses. Okay, so that's basically what, um, what our course looks like. And when, we, when the teachers package all of that together in a one-week uh, unit, we call that a learning unit. And I get the teachers to standardize their courses in that uh, they sort of, the layout looks the same. The pacing is done week by week. So um, it, within the Blackboard content system, there's like, you'll see like quarter one work, quarter two work, quarter three work, quarter four work. And then within each of those buttons under the quarters, they're, they're laid out weekly within a topic that they're studying. Okay, so I want to talk just a little bit about some of the tools that the teachers that the teachers use to to teach these courses. Um, we've got a lot of things going on, and I'm just going to first kind of talk about some communication tools because that's an important part to the course when you're taking an online course and you're sitting in front of a computer. You, you need to be able to communicate not only with the teacher but also with other students in the course. So uh, my teachers use a variety of tools. Again, I'm just going to throw them out there, and not every teacher is using every tool, but certainly every teacher is using at least one of these tools in these different content areas. Um, so uh, most of my teachers use Edmodo. Some of you may be familiar with Edmodo. It's a great way uh, for them to have sort of a private classroom where they can run like, a, like an asynchronous uh, chat room. And when I, when I first introduce it to my teachers, I tell them that, it, that it's sort of like uh, a private educational Facebook. And then they sort of get it, and the kids get it. But when the kids sign up, um, they're given a course code. So only students within that course could join that Edmodo page. And then the students can go in, and they can choose how to receive when there's new postings in this course, they could choose to receive a, um, a text message or an email message. And so I know that many of our high school students today don't check their email daily, even though as part of the course we tell them they need to do that. So if they know they're one of those students, then they can choose to receive a text message to their phone that says, hey, you know, don't forget you have you know, assignment 2A due tomorrow. You need to read these pages and do this. Additionally, the students uh, can talk, sort of uh, talk back and forth to each other. So if somebody's working on something and they have a question, the teacher's not available. I've emailed the teacher. She's not he or she's not answering. They could post the question to Edmodo, and immediately they might get three or four answers, five answers back from their classmates who receive that text message and know that answer. So it's a great way for them to support each other and sort of um, talk with each other. Um, and the teacher, again, you might be thinking, oh, how do I know what they're saying? And some of my teachers initially have a concern about what students might be posting within that course. But the teacher, again, gets a message every time a student posts. And so they're monitoring that, and they can delete messages. They can control what's going on within their course. Many of my teachers also use Google Voice. They get a Google Voice uh, number. They sign up for that, and then they give those students their Google Voice number, and they can, they can actually call and leave a message for the teacher if they have a question. That way, the teacher can pick up those messages uh, via email, um, and they don't have to worry about giving their cell phone number and the kids you know, calling on that number, and they can pick it up in their own time. So that's another communication tool. I also have some teachers that have Twitter pages um, that are just for their private pages, and they only allow their students in their course 
uh, to sign up onto those pages. And then the teacher can post announcements again to that Twitter or, you know, or hey, you're reading chapter three tonight. Be sure to pay attention to this section about the Renaissance and, you know, what happened, you know, it's really important. Or, you know, if you forget to say something within the course, it's, it's just another way to reinforce what's going on. Many of my teachers also use uh, the voice thread tool within Blackboard. And I'm going to show you that when we go into the course here at the next screen, where uh, one of my teachers actually uses it to introduce every section in the learning unit. So the students are hearing her voice um, as she presents the assignment. And then there are some times when she actually asks them to respond to her, and they have to record their voice back. And then she could, again, turn around and give them feedback. So it's a great communication tool uh, that way. I also have many teachers that um, record. Uh, they just take a digital camera or their cell phone camera, and they'll record a quick little announcement. And um, they go ahead and they post that as a, a WMV file within their course, um, and then the kids can watch that video. Some of them are posting to SchoolTube, um, and they can, they can embed then that image right into their, into their Blackboard course, and the students can not only hear the teacher, but they, could, they can see the teacher. Um, I have, uh, as a requirement for my teachers, they hold what are called Illuminate sessions. And so for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with Illuminate, it's also maybe called Blackboard Collaborate. Um, it is a tool where the teacher says, OK, on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, we're all going to come to this meeting. And it is a synchronous meeting where all the kids must be present. And the teacher um, can give a, you know, a mini lecture about the important things that are happening that week, important topics. The kids can ask questions. Um, those can run anywhere from a half an hour. Sometimes the teachers are in those sessions uh, for an hour, certainly no longer than an hour. But um, this, the teacher can take role. Uh, he or she can actually ask questions, poll questions, just like Steve did with us as we came into this webinar today. So um, they know whether or not the students are present, whether or not they've just turned the, the, you know, logged into Illuminate Collaborate and then walked away. They can't really get away with that. Um, and then they also make that a required assignment. Um, those sessions are also recorded. And so they are posted in their Blackboard session. For, so if for some reason I had a sporting event and I couldn't attend, then they could watch that session and do a write-up and send it to the teacher. So lots of ways to actually communicate. And that's one of the big tools that my foreign language teachers use is the Illuminate piece. Um, I also have teachers using podcasts, which is very almost similar to a voice thread, but they're recording their voices. They can, <clears throat> excuse me, capture capture audio events and songs and speeches and sounds and then they can post them to the to the blackboard system um, they also can use what we call captivate which is a piece of software that we buy where the teacher can actually record their voice and the desktop of their computer show them how to interact with a website or interact with a piece of software um, I had a teacher using uh, a tool like that uh, captivate, excuse me, to sort of show his students how to uh, get in and log on to our, we have a Google Apps domain and all of our kids use those Google Apps accounts and some of the kids were having problems so they, they can demonstrate that. And then um, we have uh, other tools like uh, StudyMate and Respondus. Uh, um, Study, um, yes. Let me interrupt. People are asking to see some of the content that you okay. created rather than go through each of these, if you don't mind. Sure. So you want me to go to the course is what you're saying? Sure. That's what people are asking for. I you can. can. Just, just to, I want to let you know that not all of these tools are going to be represented within the course. So that's why I was kind of going over them. But I'm going to show you as many of them as I can. And then if any of you have questions, just, just be sure to ask me. <clears throat> OK, so Steve, I'm going to go ahead and then switch to the course. So I'm going to just leave my PowerPoint here. OK, so now I hope you can see my screen OK. Mm -hmm. All Perfect. right, great. 
So I've gone into, uh, this is actually a, a Blackboard course. This is not a real uh, live course. This is one that I use for training and demonstration purposes. But I have taken a section of content from one of my English language arts teachers. And um, as I said on the side, for those of you that haven't used Blackboard, we have these buttons here. And for each of my um, teachers that teach, I ask them to sort of standardize these buttons. So in other words, at the top we have announcements and then we have information about the teachers. And then there's a button for each quarter. So first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Those are our terms and how we break things down. So. Um, I'm going to take you into, we're looking at actually this third quarter button right now. Um, and you can see here as I scroll down how this teacher then organizes content. These are actually learning units for each week. So each quarter has 10 weeks. And you can see how this is broken down this way. And the teacher tries to be, like put a visual hook there for each of the for each of the weeks to sort of get the kids interested in what they're doing. So what I'm going to do, I'll take you into, let me go into um, this week two here, which shows a couple of the tools. And then I'm going to go back and we'll go into that week four, which has a, that nice Frankenstein unit in it. Um, you can see here she's got some pacing listed. And then when we go into the course, this is the actual learning unit itself. And this learning unit has eight different steps to it. Um, and the student can either choose to click through these different, different uh, sections of the learning unit at, in, out of order, or they could choose to follow the order by going through this arrowed system here. I'm sorry we're getting that error. I'm just going to go back. That was one of the areas. Let me go back right here. <clears throat> OK, Let's see if I can go into voice presentation, see if it'll work. Let me run Java. OK, good. So what this teacher has done is she's used this voice presentation. And I'm going to turn her voice on in just a minute so you can hear what she's saying. She's introducing this unit. OK, so I'm going to let that play. Actually, we can't hear that. You can hear it through your microphone, but we can't hear that. OK, let me just turn that down. I'm sorry. Give me one second here. OK. So the teacher then, through this presentation, as I said, she goes through and she introduces these units. Okay. Each different day, you hear her voice, and she talks about what they need to do. Now, I'm going to click through some of these. And some of these, um, we're going to see a couple of errors, just because I went through and I removed all of the student names. And so for any time there was a student name associated with this, this is just a quick write. And the students were required to do journal entries here. And so we're not going to see the student information there. Now this, um, she's taken and she's done what's called uh, used blabberize. I'm going to see. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. But she can actually make this figure talk. Okay. And again, just as a way to sort of hook the students in, she has this picture of Wendell Berry, and he talks to the kids about the lesson. So of course, again, it sort of makes it interesting for the kids. And then she's got a soft chalk here. Let's see if I can get it to load. OK, come on. There you go. So she's taken this information, uh, this The Pleasures of Eating by Wendell Berry, and she's put it into a soft chalk. And so they have the reading, okay, and then she takes them into this photo album activity, which again is part of soft chalk. Okay, she has them read through this with the visual images. <clears throat> and then they can stop, they can take a quiz, and I'm sure you guys, if you've used this, you're familiar with how this works. Then they can check their answer immediately. They continue reading. So this is a way that she uses soft chalk extensively within her courses. Okay, then we go to the next one. She's actually linked a video here. 
Okay, so you can see she's used the video tools here. And I think this is from Discovery Education. Our district subscribes to Discovery Education, and every student has an account where they can go on and they can watch these videos, as well as teachers. And my online teachers can embed this content right into their Blackboard page. Okay, and then here she's used uh, Glogster. If any of you are familiar with Glogster, which is a tool. Um, I call on the teachers to be very careful to use glogster.edu and not glogster.com because some of the ads on glogster.com are not appropriate for high school use or high school level. Um, and glogster.edu, she's uh, put several clips in here. They're video clips where they talk to the kids. And then she, as part of this project, will also have them do a glogster where they have to take their learning and present it in this visual way. <clears throat> Okay, this is the next part of the unit here. If I can get it to load. It doesn't look like it's loading here. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is another soft chalk that she's used in here. And again, you can see she's taken this writing by Michael Pollan. And she's used the text poppers. Um, she's put the text. She's used quizzes. And this, again, she has go right into her grade book so she can see if the kids or the students have done the work. And it goes, you know, it gets submitted right to her grade book within the Blackboard content system. And again, this is a uh, the actual assignment, and we're getting an error here again because I've removed all the student names. And what they had to do was do a, a, a short essay, and they posted it in the way of a blog so that they could go in, each of them, and they could look at each other's, each other's content, and they could uh, comment on those. So I'm going to go back because there's one more area here I want to take you in, and this is the Frankenstein unit. I think she did a, just a great job on this unit. Again, you see the pacing here. And as you go in, again, we can enter into the voice presentation, which she has broken this down, again, given this, the kids or the students directions on what they need to do. Again, the pictures, what they had to do was they had to take and they had to draw, uh, before they read the story, their image of Frankenstein. As we know, their image usually comes from the movie or the TV show, um, what they've seen on TV. And so there were some really nice pictures, hand-drawn pictures here of Frankenstein. And then they go through and she studies the setting, the original setting or the opening setting of Frankenstein. And they, they study the North Pole. and. Um, we launch this. They go right to the National Geographic website about the North Pole. There's a couple of videos in here that actually aren't coming up right now. My filter must be blocking it at the moment. But um, she pulls in, or they pull in, uh, the you know the National Geographic website because it is so interactive and it has a lot of good uh, resources and video resources there. The reading letters piece, again, is a really cute soft chalk that she did. Let's see if I can get it to go. Okay, where they talk about, they go through this whole thing where they, they talk about the ethics, you know, reading other people's mail. And, you know, she has this cute Norman Rockwell picture here. But again, trying to pull the kids in and make it as interactive as possible um, really helps with this course. Let me go down here. And then, uh, again, she has another voice presentation here where they're starting, they're doing some research. And they're actually uh, doing some research in the area of uh, scientists since Frankenstein is, you know, set in that time period when we have the Industrial Revolution. And th so they go and they, they uh, research scientists and then they report their information here again. I'm not seeing this because I won't see these next two things because it had kids' uh, information on there, we pulled that out. So um, again, that's basically um, what those learning units look like. Um, I, if I go back to my PowerPoint now, some of the tools that I didn't get to show you, um, including uh, um, Pixton and Animoto, which are sort of like uh, they're 
there are websites where you can generate, you can put in a story and you can choose characters and it animates it like a comic strip. Um, just trying to pull, again, the kids into to the unit and make the, the unit interactive and uh, interesting. And then the last piece that we've sort of picked up um, this year particularly is Google Docs. I have uh, several teachers using Google Forms to help manage their courses um, where they, uh, if the students have uh, late work. For example, one of the challenges of working with the uh, Orange Light program as a teacher is that you have students at all, all four high schools. And so when you have a student that emails you and say, you know, um, Mrs. Kiros, I know I turned this in. Can you know this is the assignment? Can you look for it? So instead of getting that email, this teacher has created uh, a form where they go in and they fill out. They choose their high school. They put their name in there. They put the the course that they're in, the unit um, where the work is missing, and what the name of it is when they think they turned it in. And for those of you that haven't used Google Forms, what that does is it populates a spreadsheet, and so um, you can actually set that to notify you. Uh, when something is submitted there so the teacher gets an email, then they can go in and check it. And that spreadsheet keeps a really nice record of every student that's asked you, you know, I've reported a missing assignment or they even use it for late work, things like that. And then additionally, the collaborative piece of the Google Apps has been a great resource for not only my online teachers, but also uh, my teachers facing, uh, teaching in the face-to-face -face classroom. Okay. So I kind of went over some of this, but I just wanted again to sort of review about why our program has been so successful in that um, first it meets the diverse needs of many of our students. Um, yeah, that we, we actually skipped that uh, poll we were going to give. Maybe it's yes. we, we pushed that in. Should we take a pause right now? And yeah, let's, 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 okay. ask, let's ask people the question that you had suggested actually because of all this conversation you had about the various tools that are available to your educators for creating online content. So the question at hand is, how do you, how does your organization teach, you know, create online content? So, you know, the questions are obvious in terms of you build your own, some of your own, you have um, um, someone else, you purchase the content from a publisher perhaps, so we've got about half the people responding. Um, and I'd like to get a little bit more if we can to see sort of what, what the uh, sense is. The interesting part is only 7% are saying it's not applicable. So we've got lots of educators out there that are doing something with online or blended education. So in order for you to finish, um, let me... Uh, close it since most have responded and okay. share the result. So most everybody is creating part or all of their content, you know, in one way or the other. Right. And, and I think that's that's really where the powerful piece comes in with what we do. Because as the teachers create their own content, they own it. They know what it is they need to teach, what it is they want to teach. And we found great success with them, with them doing just that. OK, back to you then. OK. <clears throat> All right, so um, again, um, as I go back and just about the success of the program is that how it meets the diverse needs of many of our students and again the biggest part is the access and the flexibility uh, for students in their schedules and then also um, equity you know it levels uh, those course offerings for those students that might not normally get to take a course that wasn't offered at their high school and uh, that's been a real big plus um, Additionally, we know that our kids are exposed to, you know, the internet and all of these tools from, you know, from the time that they're born, and that this this program really uh, reaches them in terms of it's relevant for their learning style, and teaches them those really important uh, skills that they need to be successful. 
um, not only in high school, but also on into college, or if they choose not to go to college in the workplace. I was doing the same presentation for parents a few weeks ago, and I had a, um, you know, some really good input about how um, they see this is so important for their children as they uh, move into this such, such a quickly changing world in terms of what technology and what, they're, what their kids are being asked to do. Um, and again, that our courses are um, you know, rigorous, uh, they meet state standards, they prepare the kids, again, whether they're going to go to high school or on to, or after high school, they're going to go on to university or on into the workforce, um, whatever that happens to be. See if I can. There we go. And then again, just some testimony from the kids and, and what we've heard them say. We do survey our students at the end of every year, and these are just, you know, some of the comments that we've heard, um, why it works for them, what they like about it, and uh, being able. And I think I've addressed all of these all of these things in the course of this session, but. Um, to the one about not having to wait for everyone else in class, that I can work at my own pace. If I need to hear something again, it's recorded there. I can play that video again. I can play the teacher's directions again. I can go back and I read it, can read it. And I don't have to be worried about what other people are thinking because I didn't get it the first time. And uh, um, this year, uh, I know one of the, um, important things that we've been looking at is that how this looks on a college application. And I know there are some of you out there from higher ed and uh, that online learning is becoming such a large part of higher education and how this, if they can say that they've taken an online course in a college application, how that can only help them. So I think, Steve, that kind of covers everything I wanted to say today. I don't, if, there, if there's anything I missed, or say, or somebody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Well, let me just remind people that the question Q&A block is out there to ask any questions that you may have. One thing that that um, is out there is, do you have any special hiring constraints? You talked about the hiring practices, um, and they have to be credentialed and get through all the certificate certification that California requires, but because they're going to need to also create online content. Are there special hiring practices for this group of teachers? Um, when we're looking for teachers to, to teach in the online program, they're traditionally teaching, like I said, in the face-to-face -face program. And so we would have like one of their courses, one of their five courses or sections that they teach during the day would be online. So as I look for a new teacher, I, I look for uh, just somebody that is an excellent teacher and good in the classroom and willing to try something new. Um, it's not hard to learn the technology tools. Um, so I sort of look for that combination, and I definitely get feedback from my site principals and uh, just you know other teachers that are working in the program. It's not, um, it's, it, we sort of look at it as, you know, we look for those best teachers, and working in the online program is definitely a, um, sort of a, a privilege. We, we sort of, um, again, just the extra staff development that goes into that, I just look for those really good teachers that are willing to put the extra work and time in. And, and if they're good in a face-to-face -face environment, they're going to be great in online. Um, there are several comments. Uh, one of them is about the Blackboard tools. Uh, yes. How do you prepare students for using the Blackboard software and, and other tools? Well, you know, that's a great question. Our, um, our district as a whole, ha every student in our district has a Blackboard account, whether or not they're in a face-to-face -face class or an online class. And so many of uh, the regular face-to-face -face teachers use Blackboard as a way to support the instruction that's going on in their classroom. They post announcements there, they post content from teaching worksheets, uh, PowerPoints, videos, um, and so the students are very familiar with what Blackboard is. That isn't a new term for them. And then 
the first week of our course, we have what's called a meet and greet with all of our online students where we bring the teachers together at a school site. The students come and then the teachers orient them to their course. And um, by the power of our student management system that we have, the students are automatically enrolled in those courses as part of the enrollment process at the beginning of the year. And so it's simply a matter of having the online teacher show them where to go if they're unfamiliar with the course name, where to click and how to get into that course. And then the teacher does the whole orientation piece, like I said, at about a, it's about a 15, 20 minute, probably a 20 minute orientation session that happens the first week of school. Um, there, there's a question about um, the forms built into Blackboard when you're speaking of, you know, training kids for Blackboard and stuff. Apparently you're not using the forms, you're using other tools, and there was a question about that. Uh, the forms that are in Blackboard, could you give me an example of that maybe? I don't know Blackboard well enough, but I think that, okay. it, the, 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 there were other tools you were using, so um, right. Kathleen asked about that, so maybe she wants to come plug back into the Q&A and uh, sort of uh, give us more detail right. about we that. Do. Discussion boards, she says. Discussion oh, boards. discussion boards. Yes, we do use the discussion boards. Absolutely. We use the discussion boards in Blackboard. Um, it's just we use most of the tools that are there. We, we use uh, the SafeAssign, which is the plagiarism detection software. The students still turn, many of the students turn their assignments in through Blackboard for grading. The respondents tests actually feed right into Blackboard, into the gradebook. It's just another version of a testing software. So we do use the tools within Blackboard. I didn't mean to overlook those at all. It's just I was sort of talking about some of these other tools to make the course more interactive. Right, right, yeah. right, right. There's other comments about the fact that uh, people with virtual classes and online class becoming more prominent, they're talking about all the resources they put into figuring out how to be places so their students can go to face-to-face um, -face live classes. So the world out there in terms of education is indeed changing significantly. Right. Um, and so I think we are done with the, with the questions that have been asked out there. Um, there's still a moment if you have another question to do, but let me take the uh, presenter stage back. Um, okay. And let me go back into here. And um, let me remind everybody that this is the third in a series on the virtual schools. And as you can see here, we did a general session in December. Oops, let me go back. Did a general section in December uh, with all three presenters and blended schools uh, two weeks ago. And today we got Orange Unified. And all of these are be, uh, have been recorded, or we are now recording the session that we are doing, and that will all be av available on our website. So just go to our website, explore some, go to learn more, and you'll easily find. Um, the links to all these innovator sessions and to the archives. It'll take a day or two for this archive to be available. But I also want to remind everybody that Georgia Virtual School, which is a probably the largest virtual school of the three that we've examined, will be on in two weeks. So please be sure to um, to register for that. Several of you had questions about how our software works with other products, other learning management systems. So let me just tell you that the easiest way to find out is to go to our website and explore the various things that we do. We have webinars on introduction to SoftChalk, SoftChalk Cloud. We have these innovators in online learning. We can provide private demonstrations for your organization if you're interested in additional information. And we've got extensive training videos, short courses, lesson tutorials, um, obviously, the tutorials are created in our soft chalk lessons, so you are um, can you can model how to create content by going to that. We have obviously a bunch of social media that you can get to, but I would really want to encourage you to get a 30-day trial of Soft Chalk Cloud. We just are updating the Soft Chalk Cloud today. We've had a 
bunch of new features, and you should be getting an email about them very soon. Um, our accessibility is better. Our access to mobile is better. Um, there's a bunch of things that I can't, I don't have time to go through right now. But what, let, let me finalize by reminding you that you can get more information about the work done at Orange Unified School District and by Pam Quiros, and this is her email address. And if you want to know more about Soft Chalk, send an email to me, Steve at Soft Chalk, or learn more at Soft Chalk. All of this is being recorded, and to the next day or two, you will get an email. And in that email will be a link to the archive, as well as links to a variety of things, including um, a Soft Chalk created lesson that is on Soft Chalk Cloud that will have links to the uh, slideshow that Pam used, which is a list of all the other tools that they use, which maybe you find most interesting. Um, and um, as well as to the case study that is newly released, and the link to Orange Live's website as well. So I want to thank everyone for joining us 